Cincy, when we when we were making these records, when we when we were recording back then in the you know uh, in the late sixties, early seventies, um, I know when I you know when when I when Lou Adler at one point tell you this story. Lou Adler at one point told us there's a television show uh, coming on for the summer called Danger Man. And they're looking for a theme song. And he was producing Johnny Rivers at the time. He said, I can get Johnny Rivers to sing the theme song if, if you'll write it. So I said, well, you know, what do I, what's the name of the song? He says, it's got to be Danger Man, which was the name of the show. So, um, I, you know, I didn't know what to write about. He said, you know, think of just write like it's about James Bond. This is when James Bond was starting to happen. Anyway, again, long story short, the show was changed at the last minute to Secret Agent Man. And it was going to go on the air. So I wrote the lyric, one verse, one chorus, because that's all it had to be. Um, Phil Sloan, who was my partner at the time, he didn't want to have anything to do with it, although he came up with the thing I think that's the best part of the song, which was the, the guitar opening. So anyway, we write this thing, Secret Agent Man. Johnny Rivers records it, and the television show goes on. It's a summer replacement show. We're kind of embarrassed about the song. You know, that's stupid, you know, writing about a secret agent. But it's a television theme, and, you know, we got paid a little money to do it. By the next season, the show was so popular, it got picked up again. And now we get a call from Johnny Rivers, and Johnny says, um, uh, you know, the, uh, can you write a second verse? It's, 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 everybody's requesting this song whenever I, whenever, I, whenever I appear. So we wrote the entire song, and sure enough, it, you know, it became this number one hit. But, you know, that was a song that we thought would mean, you know, all right, it was a hit, it was great, you know, and, and it did fantastic. But of all the th songs that I was ever involved with, this song that we thought would be the silly throwaway, it's been about 17 or 18 different movies over the years. And, and that, you know, I mean, from Ace Ventura to, uh, to the movies that, uh, what's his name, did uh, from Saturday Night Live, the, um, huh? Uh, yeah, Eddie Murphy movie. I mean, uh, there's so many films that was in. So anyway, you know, we thought the stuff that we were doing back then would probably be just go up the charts and never be heard of again. But a lot of the music, the good stuff has held up, you know, the steely dance stuff. I hear that. I hear this stuff in movies and television shows all the time. I, you know, I've got um, right now, personally, I've got things that I produced and um, everything from, uh, from the uh, Spider-Man movie to, um, the uh, George F movie about George Foreman to the trailer to, Bar to the Barbie movie of Mama Cass thing. So, uh, you know, it's just, look, it's been amazing um, what these songs and how these things have lived on for, for this long period of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, so wait, you have something in the Barbie movie? I haven't seen it yet. No, not in the movie. Uh, in the trailer, uh, they used um, Mama Cass's "Make Your uh, Own Kind of Music." So that was my, you know, that was my record. Oh, I mean, okay. So let let uh, let's talk about Secret Agent Man because that is the gift that keeps on giving. I love it. I love it. Secret A. Okay, we have to play that. Maybe this is a good moment to take a few minute break and play uh, Secret Agent Man. The the. The throwaway song that became the thing you can't ever get rid of or get yeah, away from. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell you the story on how Mel Torme got to sing it. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Tell us. We could play that version. Tell us. Mel Torme. Uh, uh, you want to play that version? Yeah. Yeah. So tell us. How did Mel Torme oh, well, get to it? Okay. So real quick there. I work, I work, at the time, I'm working at a record store. Even though I'm writing songs, you know, I'm getting my, you know, hundred dollars a week, whatever we got for writing songs. We hadn't had any hits yet, so I work at a record store at night. I love being around. Anyway, I'm sitting in the back. I'm playing guitar. Mel Torme comes, walks through the store to go into the uh, restaurant next door. He parked in the back. Says, "Okay, can I?" I said, "Yeah, fine, Mel. You know, you know, I loved, I loved him anyway. We sold a lot of his records." As he was leaving. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just trying to write some songs. I said, you know, I'm thinking about maybe trying to write some rock and roll songs. He says, maybe keep keep at it. He said, maybe someday I'll be singing one of your songs. And I said, Mel, the kind of songs I'm writing, you're not going to sing. These are not great jazz standards, you know, but thank you for saying that. Three three years later, he recorded <laughs> Secret Agent Man, which shocked the hell out of me. 
uh, on an album that he did called Right Now. I guess he was, so many of the artists, the great artists, even Sinatra, Bennett, whatever, you know, they all, Streisand, they all went through that period in the 70s when the companies would say, look, you can't keep singing, you know, the great American song work. It's not what's selling. It's not what radio wants. They want, so that everybody started doing more contemporary songs. And uh, fortunately for Mel, one of the big thrills of mine was that he got, he sang Secret Agent Man. I love it. I love it. Awesome. We'll take a few minute break and play it for everybody. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> 